So if you could just start by saying your first and last names. My name is Jonathan Lockhart, and I'm Kurt Lockhart. And what does it feel like to have someone who looks exactly like you walking around this planet Earth? I mean, it's cool. It's like looking at a mirror. So if you're looking real crappy that day, you can tell the mirror that. So you're saying I look like a crappier version of you, is what you're trying to say. I'm hurt. Yeah. But it, it's, it's a fun time, I guess. I guess when you're like in first grade and second grade, playing peewee baseball kind of sucks because your coaches always call you John or they call you Kurt. I mean, growing up, we didn't really have first names. We just had our last name because it was easier for teachers and whatnot until we got to college. And then that's when, well, we always had separate identities, but I guess it's kind of meshed ever yeah. since we graduated college. Were you in a lot of the same classes growing up? Never, if I'm not mistaken. Not really. We would be in like maybe like an English class together in high school or something along those lines, but like elementary school and middle school, we were always split up. We did a couple shows together in high school. That's yeah. about as close as we got to classes. Theater? Yeah, theater. Which shows? Oh my gosh. There was one called A Hundred Lunches, which is about um, this couple is writing this play. Mm -hmm. Well, not couple, they hate each other and they're writing this play, but they keep going out to many different lunch venues. And I played a role of butler, not, well, not butler, server. Oh, that's foreshadowing to my future. Oh, because I'm a server now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like this church, and John was on tech. And one night, it was our first night. This this flat starts falling forward onto this uh, this couple, and I stand in front of it. And John comes running on stage and is holding the back of it. And the only thing you can see is John's foot in the background. <laughs> yes, there was that. team effort. Yeah, there's a couple other plays. However, color. I couldn't remember them because honestly, I drank a lot and I smoked a lot. When I was in high school, <laughs> so when you're in a band, that's okay, right? Were you in a band together? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was the band called? <laughs> so we were called SOS. <laughs> the reason behind it is because we played a lot of church gigs. And Those were the only ones that were paying. And they would pay us 150 to 250 dollars per show. However, SOS, it was a joke because we were entering this battle of the bands. And it was at a church, and all of our friends said, what should we be, sons of Satan? And I was like, SOS. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. So we never told people what it stood for. <laughs> What's it like going to school together again? Oh, God. I'm well, cool. <laughs> it's cool because you got somebody else to hold like accountability for you. So, for instance, I don't usually wake up to an alarm. I wake up to Kurt walking in my room and seeing myself exposed and him saying, God damn it, John, you gotta get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And we can also look at each other and say, hey, we gotta stop drinking this week. We have tests. Oh, yeah. Or, um, which is, I mean, we don't drink heavily. We just like to go out and have like one or two or three, but not more than that, normally. Do you agree with that statement, John? Um, I had five last night, so I disagree with that statement. <laughs> All right. Well, night. I'm an adult. It was also <laughs> it was also a work night as well. Yeah. I mean, after like a awful night of working, it it definitely takes the the ease off and the frustrations and yelling in the car. Yeah. Do you work together? Yes. Where do you work? Shula's Steakhouse, so Shula's too. It's, so if you're ever on the right side of the road, <laughs> come see Kurt and John. Have so, you ever, uh, are you both servers or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that gets interesting. <laughs> that's nice one. Uh, Do you play tricks on them? A little bit, sometimes. I mean, then again, I kind of have like 60 pounds on Kurt. So I always give like the couples at each table fair warning that, hey, there's another one floating around. And people always give us weird looks and say, oh no, no, that's not true. And then they'll start asking, be like, oh, server. And John will give them this weird look like, whoa, I'm not serving your table. And I'll do the same thing to John's tables. 
like quit talking to me. Like, I'm not your server. <laughs> You're not giving me a tip right now, so whatever service I'm doing to you is worthless to me. It's pretty harsh. I uh, gotta make money. <laughs> Sorry, actually. Welcome to post back life. <laughs> I, think, I think we've been stiffed way too many times. Well, yeah. actually, not too often. No, I've been stiffed a lot. No, I'm sorry. What's the usual reaction when people discover that you're twins or when they meet both of you at the same time? I Now, now it's a little different because I, I do have the more weight on me. They're like, oh, you guys must be brothers. And it's like, well, we're twins. Or like when we go into the cashier line and they want to check both of our ideas, I'm like, you guys are just blind. Like, come on. Really? Why? It's the same thing. You're going to like look at it and think it's fake or something because you have two people who are like, oh, I know, you can't be twins. You, you weigh more than him. Uh, I had more fun in college. Don't give me this. Uh, but I guess it's always like more of a positive reaction. Like 90% of the time if we're working together, it usually makes the experience and more entertaining for our guests. Because they're like, oh, there's twins running around here helping us out. That's awesome. And the other 10% are just, you know, assholes. <laughs> and they want to just continue drinking their bottle the whole time about their yachts and shit. So we always make jokes about those people <laughs> in front of their friends. So it's great. What are some of the biggest personality differences between you two? <laughs> um, I'm a little bit more blunt. <laughs> I, I think that's the best way to describe it. Um, I'm a little bit more forward. Um, Kurt, I'm, I think I'm more polite. No offense. Like, like but I'm more polite. <laughs> we're both very polite people when it comes to etiquette and whatnot. It's just I'm going to be more open because. Yeah. Twenty-five. I have what another fifty more years left, so I'm going to say whatever I damn well choose. I think if John was single at this moment in time, he would openly walk up to a person and say, "Hi, I'm 25 years old. I still live with my parents, and I'm going back to school. It's a pleasure to meet you." And if it goes past that, that's a good sign. But if it doesn't, and it stops right there, then John's like. Cool, bye. <laughs> Whereas I'd be like, oh, you're not gonna find out that information until a little later on. Oh, might as well get it out there. Just throw it out. Yep. What are some other big differences between you two? If we're talking about the feet are a little bigger. <laughs> um, I'm, I might be a little taller when it comes to aesthetics. Um, Kurt's bald patch and on the top of his head starting to get a little bit. Larger. It's not as bad as yours, though. Um, <laughs> I true. have a tattoo that my parents still don't know about. Please don't show this to their parents. Um, <laughs> they would kick us out of the house. It's so funny because I've had this tattoo since 19 and I'm 25. And every time we would go on like, family vacations, it's like, John, why won't you swim? Like, my body, like, I just have so many issues with it, I can't swim right now. But really, it's the fact that I have a tattoo on my back. What's the tattoo of? So, uh, well, if I, it's a nautical star and a four-leaf clover, and midway through this guy, like, you know, putting it on my back, he's like, you're not a part of, like, the Aryan race or some shit. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> like, th this is a, you know, a great revelation to have midway through putting a tattoo on my back. Um, but no, I'm not. Uh, like, in what color is your face? Your eye color? Uh, hazel. Okay, cool, we're fine. <laughs> Check my ID. Like, or do you want to look at me? Here it is. Oh, the beard. <laughs> I want to play a little game. So I'm going to ask you who is more of something, and then you'll point to the brother who's, uh, who fits that characteristic. So who is the funnier brother? Easy. Easy. Who's the smarter brother? Well, well when it comes to life choices, Life choices, yes. Who gets all the ladies? Uh, is this really a question? Um, yeah, but yours don't work out. No, they never work out. So <laughs> never worked out. I'm doing pretty well right now. Yeah. I mean, you've had way more long-standing relationships. I've had more 
fuck ups. Yeah. <laughs> John's got a year and a half. I've been, I've been in a relationship for a year and a half, which is fantastic because my longest relationship before that was like four months. John had one moment. Can I tell him the story? Oh yeah. I mean, so it was, I think it was 4th of July, and we might have, you know, been celebrating America a ton, a ton that evening with burgers, hot dogs, and libations. Uh, and John's in his bed in his boxers, and he looks at me and says, Taylor is a wonderful woman. She puts up with my insert shit. <laughs> um, adult, if you say that. I know, I'm trying to be polite here. This is going on like cable access or something. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. He looks at me and says, I love that woman. And from then on, I've just always been like, that's the perfect woman for John. Because whenever John says something stupid, she'll look at him and say, shut up. I get that look multiple times a day, not repeatedly. I love it. Can you describe your relationship with your brother? One you know what? Growing up, we would fight constantly because it was like, you know, this bickering back and forth, of like who's going to do better and who's going to get somewhere before the other one. And we came to a realization like after college that, oh my God, we're both pretty worthless. So let's <laughs> try to figure this out together. From home, but when we're, when one's at home and the other is away, it's always kind of like, we'll call each other probably like, Twice, three times. I think I think I call him more than I do my girlfriend. Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, her opinion matters. It's just when it's like I'm teetering in between. Is this a good idea or a bad idea? I call him because I'm gonna get the no from her automatically. So I can't do that. And you'll get the eh, maybe yeah. from me. Growing up was interesting. Why? <laughs> I don't know. We've we've been through we've been through a lot. Been through. A lot. <laughs> uh, I don't know how deep we want to dive. I don't know. I just really don't care anymore. <laughs> I mean, we've been through like a lot of rough times, especially like in childhood. It was crap. Yeah. Um, you know, the whole divorce thing. Like every kid goes through now. Like one and one and two go through that and. Just working with the Cleveland court system and it's having no to, having to deal with like mandatory counseling and that kind of crap. <laughs> it sucked. It was horrible. And it got to the point where I was just you know pissing off these psychologists because I wanted to make them break because they're trying to get through to me and I'm like oh, no, not happening. And we had like a team effort and it wasn't just me and Kurt. It was also. Our sister was a part of that, and like getting through that was real rough, especially because it it lasted from like to the age we were like four or five to like 14, 15 years old. So I mean that was a miserable process, and nobody should have to go through that. And that's why I believe marriage should be you know carefully thought out decision, yeah. and you should wait probably until you know thirty something. Student kids get married now, and it's like oh I don't like you, and it's twenty five and. You're both in debt, and they just split that debt, and they're like, here you go. Yeah, but we went through it. We know not to drink much because of that situation. Oh, I mean. But try not to drink as much. You, you find out as you grow up <laughs> what you can and can't do. But I think we really grew it up at that time, and I think we were very, that situation, and kind of having a mother who, was single and working in the Cleveland Metropolitan School District when um, we were sick. She would still have to work. <laughs> so we always went into school and we were always able to, from then on, or if you got in trouble. Yeah, we still were. <laughs> yeah, if you got suspended from school, you were with mom at work doing your homework. It was funny because I would always hang out in the like in school suspension room with other kids at like whatever school my mom was at for that day. <laughs> It's the only place I could be at. <laughs> but I think from then on, we just truly have this understanding of caring for other people. And even if it's a complete, the thing I love about John is at a very like middle school, high school, even if it was a complete stranger, John would walk up to them and just have this 
warm, like, hey man, how's it going? And I think I've kind of adopted that. I mean, it's slowed down for me because, you know, I like beats you down constantly on a daily basis, and he keeps going with it, and I'm just like, <laughs> I'll talk to you if you, you know, you're really looking desperate. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what do you like best about Kurt? Um, is it like facial features? <laughs> so I like the best about Kurt. Nothing. Tell you. Hopefully something. You know, I like that Kurt's my good cop. <laughs> Who's your I, bad cop? I re I'm the bad cop <laughs> in any situation. When, like when when it comes to first meeting people now, Kurt's like, oh hey, how's it going? I'm more blunt. I just say what I'm thinking, and people are like, wow, that's real overbearing. It's like, and then they get Kurt, and it's like, oh, this is like, fuck you. This is so nice. What is it? Jessica will not, or Jessica, our sister, is two years younger than us. Uh, if she's in the process of dating someone and she makes introductions, she never wants to start introducing family members. I mean, her, the, the boyfriend with John. Because John just be like, hey, say something really, really blunt to shock them and see see their expressions and kind of go from there. When I'll just be like, oh, hey, how's it going? What are you studying? What are you doing? I like making people crack. <laughs> yeah, if there was a job for breaking oh psychologists gosh. down, I would do it. I would totally do it. Like, give a psychologist their worst day ever. One thing I don't like about to do John it. is he, he likes to make people cry. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, he just wants to make people better at their job. Exactly. I mean, I'm if not you're sure not going to be the best way to go about it, well, you got to deal with some serious crap if you're going to be a psychologist. That's right. And if you can't put up with it, you should probably get out and, you know, you know work the phones or something. Because well, that's all you're going to be good at. <laughs> Sorry, if you can't take the pressures of your, your daily tasks and your job, you go home and you, you, know, you put it on your family and whatnot, you probably should not be in that job. Or that field, just go do something else. <laughs> do you have any other final thoughts about being twins, being brothers? Um, it's been fun. It's been a great ride thus far, and I mean, I still hope it continues. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's going to continue, especially thinking, because like when we were 18 years old, we never expected to live this long with the hard lifestyles that we were choosing, because um, we had a lot of fun, <laughs> and we just thought we were going to be in a band and you know go places. And, you know, I don't think we. The only reason we thought about school was specifically for our parents. Otherwise, we kind of would have probably saved up enough money, got in a car, and just traveled. Yeah, just kind of. Because yeah. I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really live in Cleveland, Ohio anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good town and it's growing. And we're proud of you, Cleveland, but uh, proud. I'm kind of proud of Cleveland. Really? Yeah. Come on. What are you talking about? Look at the failing infrastructure outside. My friend Jackson doesn't do anything. Potholes. Yeah. Police, police <laughs> beating up people, like killing people. Like, that's real cool. Oh, and then this is now my job. Oh yeah. <laughs> and yet he's the person who's in charge of Cleveland Municipal School District. I mean, yeah, let's make everything a technical school. So instead of widening widening the range of, of a student's mind, it's like okay, now you can only do eight jobs. Mm -hmm. You can either go to college or you can start working at FedEx because that's all you're going to get. Not two, that FedEx is a good, I mean, we have two parents trip. who are teachers, so we kind of have a very liberal, liberal standpoint. <laughs> very liberal view and opinion, and it's more focused on humanities, and it's very important. Um, people are important. Um, I hate the fact that you know, meeting somebody and they're just all about themselves and it's like, good God, just, you know, think about somebody else for a second. I think we do that very well and sometimes, like, people take advantage of that and that's when we get mad. <laughs> so you see the... The darker sides? Yeah. Because we, we'll both feel it. We'll both be like, oh God, I just want to punch the crap out of my manager right now, but I can't. 
because that would be bad, because he's a good person, he's just acting like a jerk right now. <laughs> In those moments, are you communicating telepathically? I think so, like a little bit, because we, we feed off each other when it comes to our own personal emotions, um, as well as I'm drunk, you're drunk, Taco Bell. Or <laughs> <laughs> there's the John Strunk, Kurt, I want to get in a fight tonight. Yeah. And I'll look at him and say, yeah, you want to go to jail too? And he'll be like, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And I'll say, horrible. cool, you should, you should drop that attitude. <laughs> What else? Oh, there, we do have this weird thing, even even with our sister, mm -hmm. um, when something is like going wrong with our family, we'll all call at home. Like, Jessica was at John Carroll, uh, John was at Mount Union, and I was at Shenandoah, I think, at yes, the time, we went to college. At down in Virginia. Uh, <laughs> and our grandmother was going through uh, some health issues, and we would all call home at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. Just to like check up, see how everything's going. I don't know. Yeah, just because our parents don't tell us anything. You know? <clears throat> uh, but yeah, we just have this like kind of strange connection where, much like you said, we don't really have to speak with words. If we're feeling angry, we just have to give one look at each other, and we'll just know. And then the other person will try to be the comic relief for the rest of the evening. What's that look? So we we'll both look at each other in the eyes. Can you show me? I feel like I'm just like gonna gaze at you like a Titanic. <laughs> That's actually really cool. Sorry. Sitting down in Kent, I forget what bar it was, but we're outside on the patio, and this guy's like, Did you lose something? And I'm like, Oh, here's my moment. Because <laughs> I was pretty ticked off at the time. So I was like, Yes, that would be mine. Thank you. He's like, Is it, is it really yours? No. Like, well, well, I'm just trying to be a good guy. I was like, I don't know what it was. It was something small, like chapstick. And I had to like go through the pro thought process of, I don't know what point I was making, but I was just trying to be a jerk. And it's like, because I think at the moment we were both feeling it. Like, <laughs> I'm mad. You're mad. I just want to beat somebody to a pulp. I, I don't know We've why. never done that, mind We've you. never done that. We've never done that. I don't think we ever will. But it's just like, I, I think every guy gets this like instinct in them like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing, my life sucks right now. If I could just get in a fight or somebody could just punch me in the face, I think I would feel a little better. On a side note, <laughs> one thing that I can say that John and I just like have this immediate passion for is like we ever, ever see somebody uh, getting verbally abused or somebody who's just not having a good time with their significant other at that point, we get really angry really quick and we're not afraid to just jump in and say, hey, what's going on? Like immediately. All right. And like we get this like, I don't know, a trend with Rush. <laughs> like if I see a dude talking down to his lady friend or something, it's like, it just like courses through my veins like, I'm going to be the crap out of you right now. Absolutely. I think every time our manager makes a racist statement, or I just like something sexist. Like it's bad. Don't serve. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's terrible. It's a terrible industry. And people, it, even our coworkers are the worst. And I just have, we just have to look at them and say, Wait, Hey, what are you doing? I'm sorry. It just gets me angry. <laughs> so angry. <laughs> I've done this before. <laughs> yeah. But I'm good now. Thank you guys so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Awesome, and I do apologize for cursing because you're gonna have to bleep some things out. Do you just have like a disclaimer across? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you're gonna hear 